Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, we are going to do a more alternative makeup look today. This is more my style. This is just something that I would wear on a daily basis if I felt like it was more appropriate at work. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go in with two different Clinique foundation shades today because I am in between shades right now. So I'm going to put the lighter shade on the um, in the middle of my face and the darker shade on the outer part of my face like the forehead underneath the chin and the cheekbones i'm going to spray down my beauty blender with mac fix plus and blend these two shades together uh, for right now for me i don't have to be too careful about keeping them where i had placed them because i'm using them both to create this new shade but if you are using one to um, do a little bit of contouring you do want to be a little bit careful about not dragging the darker shade in closer towards the middle of the face um, but just for tips and tricks whatever after we're done blending all of that together we will go on ahead and use the same process that we have been using with the um cover effects powder here and the big powder brush whatever powder you want to use if you don't want to powder your face or whatever however you do it i do suggest at least powdering certain parts of your face but i am a powder all over person i feel like if i don't do this my face my makeup doesn't set it doesn't stay so here i'm going to use a rimmel a bronzer and a very dense uh, this is actually a foundation brush for um contouring like a um, wet foundation a wet bronzer anyways we're going to take that and place it in all the same places that i usually do um, along the sides of the nose underneath the nose the top of the forehead the cheekbones and we're going to grab another denser brush the crown brush that i always use and we're going to blend all of that out this shade was kind of orange but because i'm transitioning between a lighter skin tone and a darker skin tone it still worked for me you just don't want to go overboard if you are really fair with any type of bronzer, especially with an orange one. That's just not a good look. So be aware of that. If it doesn't work for you, whenever you use something, you can always, you know, give it away. And so after we are done with this, we're going to go in with our eyebrows. I do the same thing every time I do my eyebrows. I do a line on the bottom, a line on the top. I create a sharper arch and then I drag it down. I use the same product, which is going to be the Maybelline uh, Brow Stylist frame and set and do the same thing on the other side after you've drawn out your arch you just blend it all in with a spoolie now for my lips we're going to use two different colors the one on the left is from Candy Johnson and Too Faced collection it is a melted ice cream the one on the right was Sephora in a very dark shade I can't remember the name of it I'm so sorry but I'm going to start off with the um, Too Faced in melted ice cream because this shade is much more long-lasting than the Sephora in my opinion and obviously it's way too nude for me yes so we're going to add on that brown shade on top of it the brown shade from Sephora is quite dark which I like that on its own but I wanted this color to be more long-lasting and I figured I could cool it down with the um, Candy Johnson melted ice cream shade and create a beautiful shade which I think that it was a beautiful shade as you can see there so we're just going to blend that on top of it you do want to let the first layer dry just a little bit but you don't want to let it dry too much and then once you are done placing these two lip colors together you do want to let them dry for a little bit at least a minute that way you're not smudging or wiping it away um, so whenever I do go in to blend these two shades together with my fingers which you'll see here in just a minute I did let it sit for a second so now all I'm doing is I'm taking just a slight very light hand and I'm rubbing it around the lips around the edges to buff that all out and to blend those two colors together and to make sure that they are not bleeding into the foundation or going down my chin or going across my cheeks now with my morphe palette this is going to be a super easy eye look you guys i'm going to start off like i usually do getting a skin tone type color that is a little bit lighter than my skin tone right now and i'm going to brush that all over the lid from lash line to brow bone and just to get a nice little wash so that the rest of the colors that i use blend together quite seamlessly now we're going to go in with our jaclyn hill palette i promise i'll get some new palettes soon so you don't have to look at the same thing and i'm going to go in with the same brush that i was using before which is a morphe brush and we're going to dab that sort of mm, orangish brownish shade into the 
outer part of the eye and up into the crease, just brushing it lightly, bringing whatever product is left on that brush onto the crease. This is going to be a sort of transition shade, sort of base shade, because I'm going to add two more similar brown colors, just a little bit darker into the same spots on the lid. I do want you all to keep in mind that I did take more time on this than this video shows. Blending is a process. It is not a one-stop shop. One time you swipe and you're good to go. So just take your time with it. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with these two darker shades. Same thing, brown shades. I'm going to dab them into the outer corner, concentrating them in that area. And then with when there's less product on the brush, I'm going to blend them into the crease very, very gently. If you wanted more of a cut crease, you could use a smaller brush. If you wanted, you know, something completely cut crease, you could use concealer as well. So for this, I'm going to take a big fluffy dense brush that is not technically an eyeshadow brush, but I'm going to just blend that all out. And I'm going to go in with my Morphe palette again, and I'm going to use that dark gray and that purple shade sort of. This is a smaller, um, more angled brush that I'm using. I don't know the brand of this brush. I don't even think it says it on the brush itself. But I love this brush for um, packing in the color in the crease area. And I am concentrating these two colors a little bit higher. Higher. I didn't bring them quite down as low onto the lash line as I did the initial three browns that I used. I'm going to drag this again also more into the middle of the eye. I'm going to really go into the crease here and I'm going to really drag out a little bit further. And I am going both back and forth and around and around. And again, this is a process. It is not something that I did in the 12 minutes it took to film or whatever the 12 minutes that this video is long whatever totally you know what I'm saying so again it's just a process and blend that all out until you feel that it is nice and good to go now I'm going to take a fluffy morphe brush I'm going to spray it down with mac fix plus and I'm going to go in with the last shade that we are using for the eyeshadow and this is going to be sort of it's like a pinky um peachy like almost gold shimmery color and the mac fix plus is going to really help that color pop um but not be too foiled because it's not so shimmery that you know that's all you're seeing so I'm going to wash this back and forth all over the entire eyelid until I feel like it I do have a nice wash of that color and everything above it and below it is blended and you can see that is a little bit of a cut crease I'm just going to do the same thing on the other eyelid of course just so everything is nice and even and blended I'm going to take a brush that has nothing on it and wipe away any type of fallout that I had same thing spray that brush down again same thing take that same color and place it over there until again I feel that everything is blended together quite seamlessly and then once that's done I'm going to take that same brush again and wipe away any type of fallout that I had uh, like you see me doing here and then we're going to go in with our one more oh I thought that was the last I'm sorry now we're going to go in with those two shades we used before that dark gray and that sort of burgundy purple and we're going to reinforce that cat eye and the reason we're doing that is because I'm going to create a wing so we're going to reinforce that cat eye and reinforce that little slight cut crease Then I'm going to take that fluffy brush that had nothing on it blend that all out all over again and and then we're gonna go in with our eyeliner this is a wet and wild eyeliner this is pretty much the only eyeliner I use I've mentioned it before um, I just love it so 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 much I'm going to create a very sharp wing this time and I'm going to start by dragging it from the um, tail of the brow like almost at the tail of the brow and just drag that straight down and opposite of the arch of my actual eyebrow I'm going to slowly thicken that up with this um, eyeliner you don't want to drag at your face if you can possibly help it but if you need to drag at your face do so I, I do it but when I feel like I don't have to I don't see I'm very very gentle with that you don't see any type of true wrinkles going on while I'm pulling that and you just want to slowly build this wing I don't like to do a very thick wing I just don't feel like they're flattering on me personally they make my eyes look very small I like to do a very very thick Thin wing and only bring it in to, to like you know two thirds or even one third inside the eye it's very very rare that I'll do a thick wing um, but for this look this is how like I said this is my favorite way to do it and I'm so glad that I was able to show it to you guys um, there are a little bit of wobbly lines that I'm creating here and don't worry I will clean that up um, another thing that I do love about this eyeliner is that you can clean it up with a damp q-tip and it will and then you can draw back over it and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute um, also 
this eyeliner is running out. That's why it's giving me such a hard time. So with a damp Q-tip, I'm just going to very, very gently um, run it over any type of wobbly lines that I had. Um, it will, it'll take away some of the initial color and it'll almost create like a dark brown eyeshadow, which is fine because it's sort of like a blurry um, line. It's almost like you put eyeshadow underneath it and then you ran the ring over it. And so to me, that's okay. It's not, you know, the most, um, I guess, sharp or the most precise line but that's okay to me i'm just going to take the eyeliner again right here elongate that wing a little bit more sharpen it up and run it over all that that i had just erased with a perfect sharp line and then once we are done with that i'm going to spray our face down with mac fix plus and because we are done with the majority of the eyeshadow and the majority of the face, we're going to go in with some blush. I used two blushes for this look. This is a L'Oreal Radiance Boost Blush, and it came out um, a little bit stronger than I expected it to. I think the more you go into the pan, the more pigmented it becomes, which is a good thing. Then we're going to go in with this um, very, very neutral... Uh, sort of tan sandy shade from wet and wild and I'm going to dab that on top of those two blend them in with my fingers I feel like blending it in with my fingers it really helps me sometimes especially if I have way too much blush on and then I'm going to go back in with an actual blush brush now I'm going to go in with a highlighter this is a wet and wild highlighter it's the one I've been using for a while here um it's way more subtle than it seems on camera. It's definitely not this super crazy highlight. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about getting investing in a nice highlight from like Becca Cosmetics or something, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. It's, it's a lot of money, but it might be worth it. We shall see. So after I'm done with that, we're going to go on ahead and put on our mascara. For this, I did use three different mascaras, but I only showed one. I don't know why. And once we've got our mascara on, this look is complete. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to figure out or want me to do something specific, just let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to pretty much just keep doing what I want. Um, <laughs> so anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for my next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye.